Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville. Um, it's really weird how these things happen. Earlier today, I was actually working, or late yesterday afternoon, I was actually working on a script for a video where I was doing some research thinking about looking at the YouTube media landscape with respect to watches, like who's out there and how do you divide them up and what categories. And it was I was struggling a little bit because I was finding that I'd come up with some categories. Essentially, professional media, guys like Time and Tide, Hadinki, Worn and Wound, para professional me para professionals or enthusiasts which is a huge collection running everywhere from uh jody at just one more watch jewelry at the time teller adrian at bark and jack um tgv archie luxury uh guy at, at uh, just blue fish now there are millions of them um and then the dealers so federico watchbox uh uh, Christian at Theo and Harris and and you've kind of got these three distinct categories but they're not that distinct they all kind of blend and blur a little bit uh, Adrian at one hand is a paraprofessional enthusiast but at the same time he started selling straps so th where does he fit with a dealer to kind of thing likewise within the enthusiast community there's two distinct if you like camps there's what I'll call the straight um, enthusiast a straight paraprofessional so that might be Jody or Adrian or um, again guy at just boy fish where they're just straight down the line they're just a guy talking to the talking to a camera but then there's the more what I'll call performative YouTube media so they're the ones who kind of put on something of a persona um, have a lot more skits have a lot more kind of play or maybe if they're not doing the skits though their persona will be more theatrical and they'll try and blow blow up more and so that's probably where for example tgv or um or archie fits that's where i'd put him so now you've got this question of and and to be honest i was finding all this blurring and everything and i was thinking about what to say and then lo and behold right in the middle of me thinking about this the news comes out that uh that tgv and watchbox so a hardcore dealer brand and this kind of very soft core performative para professional are coming together and forming a single entity a single entertainment channel and, and we don't know exactly how that's going to work yet but basically they're coming together and working as a group the first thing was from tgv's point of view the the motivation is obvious you know his he starts life as one of us uh, a guy who does this enjoys it talks about it starts making a bit of money but at the same time i think he's always made it pretty clear he's had to keep his side gig going to pay the bills so now he gets the opportunity to do what he loves and only do what he loves he doesn't have to do everything else so why would tgv join in with watchbox it's obvious great all power to him it's exactly what he wanted but then a more interesting question is what does watchbox get out of this what does a hardcore high-end dealer um have to gain from tgv tgv is mostly lower end with the occasional touch on high end is very much about um kind of entry level pretty much everyone who gets into this often talks about you know i got into this through watching tgv many people grow past him um i certainly did that's why i've kind of stopped watching him so what what does watchbox get out of this even more interesting is when you look at the comments that were coming up on the live stream at watchbox when this was announced and there i began to get my answer all these people coming on but saying don't like tgv he's got all these problems he's like this he's like this he's too low end he's bought he does sponsored content blah 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 and a common theme was i'm not going to watch his videos now here's the interesting thing most of those people weren't probably watching his videos already and i suspect a lot of people who watch the watchbox videos aren't watching tgv but i also suspect that a lot of people who are watching tgv aren't watching the watchbox videos so suddenly far from being not obvious the connection between the two is entirely obvious the watchbox videos which are very high end very technical um mostly fronted by um uh, Tim Mosso and or some other you know very serious um, high-end luxury watch buyers and dealers marries complements almost perfectly with TGV's much more personable much more entry level much more kind of family friendly just coming to this community just coming into this hobby kind of vibe the idea is the idea was not 
to make the people who are already watching Watchbox videos happier. Frankly, they don't care about them. You're already watching. What TGV does is he brings a whole new community, a whole new community of people who may have been previously intimidated by the $25,000 Debethoons or the $50,000 Zenith Freaks that are more Tim Mosso's style. Yeah, I know Tim will occasionally slum it talking about a two or $3,000 like Breitling Colt, but frankly, that's his floor. Now, if that's his floor, that's not far below TGV's ceiling. So again, TGV and Tim Mosso don't really, they talk past each other. They talk to different people, generally about different watches, and together they cover, a, each individually, they probably cover 40% of the watch community. Put them together, and now Watchbox has media that covers about 80% of the community. And it's the next part that's really interesting it's that word, community. In some ways, TGV is not the most representative. He's not the most, um, not the most knowledgeable. He's not the most straight, uh, not the most, um, how do I put it, independent guy out there. But what he does bring is a community of people. He has ruthlessly, perhaps, curated a positive vibe of like-minded people who talk about watches and one day dream of getting a grail. That is almost the perfect breeding ground for someone who will one day buy their grail at Watchbox. Someone like Archie would be an anathema to a dealer because he hates 90% of the watches that are out there. So if he comes out and trashes ta tag, um, then which is he routinely does. If he calls a Breitling a shitter, how does he help Watchbox sell tags and Breitlings? On the other hand, the insane positivity, the never ending positivity of TGV bolts straight into the dealer desire to want to sell the product that they've got. I haven't checked recently, but I'm guessing last time I looked, Watchbox has a couple of hundred Breitling, has a couple of dozen Breitlings for sale, has dozens and dozens of, of tags for sale. The only, that's only going to work if that that uh, sales channel and the media associated that associates again with another community and another presenter that is positive about pretty much everything. So I don't think that um, Watchbox is thinking it's going to start suddenly making or Go Govberg jewelers more likely. Um, I don't think they're thinking they're going to make thousands of dollars, millions of dollars from extra views by associating with TGV. I don't think they care much about clicks and views. This is about incubating a community of people who perhaps not now, but in a while, you will be able to tap to sell their Grail watch. And TGV is that guy. There's probably no one else around that could do that for them. Now, this is not unusual. There's, there's actually a number of brands that are actively seeking this kind of engagement, even with non-buyers, to create a community of people who will one day be buyers. Car companies have been doing it for a while. Um, in cycling clothing, you've got Rafa, who do something similar with their club Rafa. This idea that there's more buying a product, sorry, there's more to associating with a product and a company than simply buying their products. Um, and TGV has carefully cultivated this with his channel. And now I think Watchbox is just trying to bolt that onto their system so that now the natural place for a person within that community to go to buy their next watch will be Watchbox. Um, so it's a really interesting thing. It'll be interesting to see if people like um, uh, Watchfinder do something similar, whether they try and create a, their community or whether they've got some other approach to it. Um, whether small players like Delray Watch at Federico, will they try and create some sort of community? Um, Theo, uh, sorry, Christian at Theo and Harris has tried to do this. He you know, openly talks about his watch fam, his watch family. I don't think he's gone so far as to create and curate something as formal, 
actually now that I think about it he probably has on Facebook um, his community is probably something kind of similar to the urban gentry not saying they run the same or speak the same or even have the same memberships but it's that same idea of having an engagement with the company having an engagement with the individual forming a community feeling that this might be the first place I look for a watch so in a sense it's probably not that unusual what you've seen here is a big company probably trying to emulate something like Christian's done at Theo and Harris but just on a massive scale and instead of building their own community organically they've simply sought to buy one in now is this going to work uh, I don't know um, I'm guessing smarter people than me certainly people with a whole lot more money and business sense than me um, have carefully calculated this I suspect TGV isn't that expensive um, looking at the kinds of stock that go through Goldberg and goes through um, goes through Watchbox, uh, given that Watchbox has um, offices literally all over the world, I'm guessing they're big enough that this is probably not a huge problem for them. Um, uh, TGV has individually had some issues. He's been demonetized at least once that I'm, a, I'm aware of. We almost certainly think it's for copyright issues. Um, there's been some issues about sponsored content and so forth that other people have raised um, frankly all of that goes away none of that's really relevant to to watchbox um, they'll provide him with and, and we saw in one of the videos you know they're already providing him with production support and so forth so that that part will look after the discipline side of copyright striking um, and in his new partnership his job is to sell watches so um, it's kind of any questions that people might have had about the whole sponsorship deal kind of go away because it's no longer a question it's just obvious that's what he's there for um, and I think he is reflectively reflexively uh, um, positive I think that is his his thing that's the way he likes to go he, he is again kind of the anti Archie it, whereas Archie is deliberately negative um, in order to generate rage and hate follows and hate clicks um, I think and, and that's just what he does he does it as naturally as breathing I think uh, TGV goes the other way you know he's as naturally as breathing I don't think it's contrived I think it is genuinely just he he just is insanely positive all the time so I, I don't know I think it might work I don't think I don't think even if it doesn't work I don't think it's a massive cost no one's going to say I'm not going to buy that watch from Watchbox because they're sponsoring TGV I would be stunned if there was a single person on the planet who would say that will it get them more watches sold maybe I mean let's just say they're paying TGV pick a number a hundred thousand US a year which they probably aren't but pick that number question how many watches would they need to sell? How many extra watches would they need to sell in order to simply make this pay itself off? Um, probably 20, 30. So the guy's got um, maybe 100,000 subscribers, plus or minus. So if 1% you know, of them buy a watch or in uh, some way influenced to buy a watch, through watchbox that they might not have otherwise or if 0.1% of them is I mean there's a hundred watches so yeah it's paid for itself not to mention the other benefits that they might get so small cost not a lot of risk potentially a bit of payoff particularly in the long run so you can it kind of makes sense when you think about it that way so anyway that's my uh, my view on how i think this came about what i think both parties are seeking to get out of it i don't think it's a bad thing um no one's hiding anything here the relationships are all fairly obvious um so i can't see any point for any outrage it's just interesting to watch how this this industry um of sellers and influencers um, is working together in this new media landscape so what are your thoughts? Um, I'd be really interested to know. I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watches. This has been me having a bit of a think on the fly about something. Um, yeah, so subscribe if you want to hear more about this sort of stuff. Uh, I've got a, if you look at the title card, you'll also see my, um, my uh, Instagram. Go check that out if you're interested. Um, thanks very much. Bye.